Electric Guru here. Today I wanted to talk about single-ended amplifiers, vacuum tube amplifiers, of course. I'm not going to get into the differences between which is better, single-ended, push-pull. Oh my goodness, it all depends on what you like to listen to. It's up to you. But Ragnar, the three-legged cat and I, we're going to talk about an amplifier I built back in about 2016. And I don't have any build videos, but I do have a lot of uh, photos and pictures and some information. And I'll just go through all that and do it like a slideshow presentation. And since it snowed today, we had about a foot of snow out there. So nothing much else to do other than have a cold brew fire up the wood burner and talk about amplifiers my favorite subject and you behave so what are the differences between a single-ended vacuum tube amplifier and a push-pull amplifier well I'm not going to start a flame war because that's going to go on and on and some people claim that single-ended is the way to go with some of these amplifiers and then there are those who like push-pull. It's all on what you like to hear. If it sounds good to you, hey, go for it. I, I can't claim myself that any one is better than the other. And I think it's nonsense that people actually do because everybody's ears are different. Now, there are a lot of differences in how they're made. And there are benefits. There's a good article out there. It was written back in 2006. I'll leave a link to it. There are two parts. Uh, part one, it's by Eddie Vaughn. And, of course, he entitled it uh, Single-Ended versus Push-Pull, the Fight of the Century. People are going to argue about this forever. But he goes over some of the differences in Part 1 and some of the benefits. It's a really good article, so it's worth reading. And in the Part 2 article, there goes over the differences of output transformers, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I think you should read it if you haven't already, but it'll give you some insight into the properties and differences between those two types of amplifiers. So I can't remember in the past, when I was growing up, there wasn't, you know, uh, vacuum tubes were around, solid state amplifiers were coming into play, and I can't recall ever having any high-end vacuum tube single-ended amplifiers that I ever listened to when I was younger. But uh, I, I do remember I had an old Philco radio in my bedroom, and it was a pretty huge wood cabinet guy because it had a 78 RPM record player in it. And I think it had a 6V6 single-ended output, and I used to listen to AM on that all the time. So I decided to, oh, this is probably six, seven, eight years ago that I decided to build a single-ended amplifier just to see how it sounded and some differences. So here's the front-end view of it, and that's what it ended up being. It contains... Uh, <clears throat> some uh, KT77s in the outputs and 6SL11, 6SL7 drivers and a 5AR4 rectifier for the power. But I think it turned out pretty dang good and I'm impressed with the sound of it. You know, there, there's an old saying, it's the first watt that counts. Well, depending on what mode this is in, I, uh, if you look at the top here, I put in some, uh, a switch there and some changes for ultralinear, trio mode, or pento mode. And 
they all sound good and depending actually on what the program material is is depending on what I have that setting on but it ranges from 4 watts output to 6 watts depending on what mode it's in and you look down on the, uh, the top down picture there I used uh, you can see the layout of the vacuum tubes and I use some transcend our transformers and the power transformer is an odd one that I just had laying around it's an old Olson electronics power transformer and it worked out pretty good in this instance so I've got no complaints and there you see the the back is just your typical back of it uh, the back end of the transformers and the speaker connections and such but I decided to use the uh, General X KT77s they're a little more on the expensive side but there's ex more way more expensive units out there especially some of the old stock but they worked out pretty good and I'm going to use uh, some KT77s in that uh, ST70 Claude bill that I'm working on now it's almost finished I'm getting close to the end I still have some wiring to do underneath this is, here's a shot of how far I've got with that but it's coming along fine so let's get back to the single-ended amplifier here um, as usual I used a, uh, a I think it was a bud chassis on this one for the size I'm not sure whether it would, could it could have been uh, Hammett I'm not sure I can't remember that far back but it was just as simple as uh, laying out all the holes the cut in and um, I again I used a PC board with this and you can still purchase this board it was it's still on eBay for sale and you can set it up for a multiple of different uh, vacuum tube types for whatever you want to use so it worked out pretty good and as you can see there's a shot of the bottom of the wiring the uh, you can see the board layout how it is and uh, <clears throat> the power supply board that was uh, from uh, John Broski at uh, tubecad.com some of the boards that he sells uh, he made, made some nice power supply boards and so how do you figure out some of the values and see what you might end up with but John also has some nice software out there actually what's out there he has will work on uh, from Windows 98 up through XP I do believe and he I used his SE amp CAD and as you can see these were the results of it and it gives you a lot of information and you can enter in the different tube types that you're going to use and if you have a lot of the information about the transformer which Transcendar has on their website that you need to enter into this which made it nice and you could see what output you're going to get and a lot of information on this on the uh, screen here um, I got some notes here I can't remember everything so I got to look at it but you know that besides that and you enter in the tube data your circuit setup and your transformer data and it gives you some information on the output stage your uh, plate dissipation and uh, unit output in the load and the uh, dynamics of the whole thing so it's a pretty nice little piece of software for working with single-ended amplifiers um, John also has a nice article that he wrote on his latest blog at tubecad.com about flea power amplifiers that someone had sent him one to listen to and test 
and he talks about that. So it's it's a nice blog article. It's worth reading about single wet amplifiers. John has a lot of insight into things. Uh, this is the uh, schematic of the circuit and the board. As you can see, the uh, 6SL7 is used as the preamp and the driver for the KT77. And you can see where I enter, have the switch in there to switch between modes from triode to um, <clears throat> ultralinear and down to pentode, um, which in pentode mode we have some uh, Zener diodes and some capacitors to stabilize the voltage on the screen at uh, 285 volts. And I can get uh, 4 watts in triode mode and in ultralinear I can get 6 watts out but it all sounds good to me and I like to listen to it in different modes. Now the speakers that I'm using with this are those Optimus Pro from Radio Shack, the LX-52s. Uh, there, I did a video on those because I had to did a little work on some, on a, a pair of them, and I uh, re reconed them, and also I had also changed the uh, cro internal crossovers. There's information on that video of what I did and uh, the guides that I used to do that. So that worked out pretty good all in all. So I'm going to leave it up to you if you have these types of amplifiers, if you have single-ended, if you have push-pull. There's no, um, no argument there of which is better because I think it is your ears, what you like to listen to, where you're listening to, what speakers you're listening to it to, um, as depending on the dampening factor of your amplifier and actually I think I mentioned this before I built this back over my left shoulder there's an amplifier with the white base that was uh, I did a video on that also it was built on some output transistors from an old stereo and I think I mentioned in there that it really doesn't sound good on my go-to speakers that's up on the upper shelf on my left, but I have a set of older, bigger speakers with 15-inch woofers. They are also where the uh, Radio Shack, um, I think I did a video on that amplifier and also I talked about which speakers those are, but it sounds much better on those than it does my B&Ws up there over my left left shoulder there, or my right, right, yeah, left shoulder. See, I'm old. I don't know right from left anymore. I get confused. But I, if you have, I'll leave some links to uh, that article from, uh, what was his name now? I haven't forgot. Um, <laughs> So I have a hard time remembering anything on that article on uh, single-ended versus push-pull, which, read it, it's very interesting to go over, and uh, you might find something you overlooked about the circuitry and how those things work and the differences between the amplifiers. And, uh, you know, again, it's, it's what you like to hear. So if you have any questions, any comments, um, I can leave a link, I guess, to this schematic if you want to look at it. I can't remember if I changed anything from the original because that was eight years ago. So you'll, but I'll leave also a link to the eBay auction where you could buy that board and put something together yourself. So have a good day and keep warm.